Welcome, friends. You are listening to God's Last Message of Mercy, a program brought to you by Advent Messenger Church. This is a Christian program dedicated to the teaching and preaching of the everlasting gospel presented in the three angels' messages found in the prophetic book of Revelation, chapter 14, for the purposes of preparing a people for the soon coming of Christ. Welcome, friends. You're watching God's Last Message of Mercy. I'm Pastor David Jimenez. Hey, friends. I'm Sergio Jimenez. And we got some very important news to share with you from our latest newsletter, Universal Fraternity. Oh, wow. And it's dealing with some crucial issues of where we're going in prophecy and in time. And you will see. But before we begin, I would like to pray. So join us in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Father, which art in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We ask now for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit and your guidance into all truth, into all understanding, Lord, so that we can understand the times that we're living in. Please be with those watching online as well. Give them your Holy Spirit and understanding. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we have some serious stuff to discuss for God's people to keep them up and aware of the time we're living in, where we're moving. Um, Absolutely. Some crucial stuff we have here in our new newsletter, a billion signatures from uh, Pope Francis, which took place in June 10th. Mm-hmm. It was a world meeting for human fraternity. Mm-hmm. And it brought, together all types of representatives from all over the world, Uh, the Pope and the Vatican, his cardinals, the bishops, the Nobel Prize winners and environmentalists, school children, various charities, uh, many politicians and religious leaders. And so they were all together creating a document to present to Pope Francis you know, to show that they're all in unity and in agreement with his agenda, which is to unite the world. And that's interesting because as Adventists, the very first thing, uh, and as far as prophecy goes, you're taught to do is say, okay, well, what is the papacy doing? They have a big role to play in the end times, as well as the United States. They also have a very big role. And so right now we're seeing one of those main characters moving, moving in a very strong way. And so a billion signatures, that's a very interesting that's a lot. concept. That's a lot. Yes, it is. Yeah. And what that is doing is that it's pointing forward to the rapid movement of prophecy yes. and the effort of the world uniting together under the beast power, because this meeting took place, this world meeting on human fraternity took place in uh, St. Peter's Square. Mm. So right in the Vatican. Yeah, right in the Vatican, June 10th, that took place. And so they were all together there and they presented this document on fraternity together. Uh, They collected a billion signatures. And so the purpose is, is uh, to gather and hmm. to show that they're under a universal union with the Pope. Interesting. Now, what's really interesting, too, is that the Pope has been doing a lot of evangelizing, so to speak. He's been going all around the world, and he's been promoting his two encyclicals. And now we're seeing representatives of the whole world now come to his front door. And now it's not him coming uh, to the world with his presentation of his encyclical. No, instead it's the world reciprocating and saying, hey, we accept it and here is proof or here is some evidence, something we can use to testify that we agree. Here's a billion signatures. That's right, that's right. So they're actually showing that they're in public support of the Pope's agenda. Um, where do they get this? They get this f- mainly from an encyclical call for Turley Tutti mm-hmm. from the Pope, where he states of a 
global union. That's yes. there needs to be a global union in humanity. Yeah, he talks about of the, working with one another. Brotherhood. Yes, and humanity. brotherhood of humanity. Mm -hmm. Yep. All on the same page, all in you in unity, mm -hmm. no division. Mm -hmm. And so we see that there's a strong effort, a push mm -hmm. for the world to unite under the papers. Exactly. And prophecy foretells these things. Yes, it does. You said if, it. If we look at Revelation uh chapter 17, verse 13, mm -hmm. these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Mm. You see, so that is a representation not only of religious leaders and world power, but also all areas of life and position. Yes. They're all in agreement. Yes. They will be all in agreement. Christ showed John in Revelation 17, 13. Yes. He showed him that in the end of time, this prophecy foretelling the beast power of Revelation 13 will reach its completion. This prophecy will indeed come to pass. It is confirmed in 13 and it is confirmed in chapter 17. That's and right. what does it show? It shows everyone in agreement, everyone saying, we give you the authority, we give you the power. As a matter of fact, let's read it very quickly in mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. It says, for God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. See that? So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing humanity, uh, religious and political powers mm -hmm. all uniting with the beast. Yes. Following the agenda of the papacy. Yes. We see that very clearly yes. with, this, with this one billion signature mm -hmm. that took place in June 10th mm -hmm. of this year. You know, what's so interesting is that this is so anti-Christian, it blows your mind because, you know, the Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ. But what actually happened <clears throat> when the devil attempted to give Jesus power over all the kingdoms of the world? Well, if you look at the temptation of Christ, that's right. exactly what happened. The devil said, hey, I'll give you all of this. All you got to do is bow down to me. Jesus said, no, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Exactly. Right? And so instead, what do we see here in the prophecy of Revelation 13 and Revelation 17? You actually see that through worshiping this beast, they're actually worshiping the dragon, which is Satan. So all that is to simply say this work of uniting the entire world together under the power of a supposed church that has never been a Christian principle. If Christ wanted to do that, he would have done it back in the temptation. Exactly, exactly. This is, anti. This is, this is more Rome, the Vatican, yes. the Antichrist power, trying to mold the world according to its own image. Yes. Change the world's frame of mind of thinking, Protestant thinking, yes. into a global union of apostasy and corruption. Absolutely. That's, that's what's taking place. Um, I would like to read from uh, the Spirit of Prophecy, Selected Messages, Volume 2, mm -hmm. page 367 mm -hmm. and 368. Notice what it says. It says, the professed Protestant world will form a confederacy, look at that, mm -hmm. with the man of sin. Isn't that like what we're seeing with this one billion signature? Exactly what we're seeing. And the church and the world will be in corrupt harmony. Look at that. Here, the great crisis is coming upon the world. The scriptures teach that popery is to regain its lost Lost supremacy. supremacy. Yep. So we see that. Now, as we see the papacy regaining its power, its momentum, and control over the world by controlling and uniting the world, what is our job as Seventh-day Adventists? Well, it's very clear. The, the messages of those three angels in Revelation 14, that go. is our job. Exactly. And it is not a job uh, that calls us to give the world this false sense of security or false sense of hope in unity based on lies, based on deception, or based on sacrificing the truth. Absolutely not. It is to call the other people out of deception, out of Babylon, to right. warn them and to bring them into God's marvelous life. Exactly. I would like to share another passage of scripture that sheds light on what's taking place. 
how the world is falling victim and following the agenda of the yes. papacy, the Pope. Absolutely. It's found in Revelation chapter 16, verse 14. And notice what it says in the word of God. It says, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So what, are, what, what, is, what is this verse indicating to us? It's indicating here that it was revealed to John by Christ that it is the spirit of demons. It is their work to use the papacy in uniting the whole world together. Yes, yes. And this agenda to unite the whole world together where no one is wrong, where everyone has to be accepted in sin and in falsehood, you know it's the it's the spirit. It's the work and spirit of demons I'm just read in the Bible. And the phenomenal thing about that is with this uh, warning and prophecy, Jesus also tells us how to escape it. Look at the very next verse. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. This is essential. This is why these videos are being shared. This is why these articles are being produced. It is because it is God's people's job to make sure that we are keeping our eyes open watching as prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes all right so to uh move on to the next i got one more quotation i would like to read Absolutely. upon this topic and it's from uh testimonies volume 7 page 182 it says the world is filled with the storm and war and variances yet under one head the, the papal power the people will unite to oppose God in the person of his witnesses. This union is cemented by the great apostate. Wow. Wow. You see That's that? Interesting. You see that? So the world, we can see it. The world is being united under one head as a leader, and that's the Pope. Yes. Why? Because it sure ain't the president of Russia. It sure ain't the president of China. Nope. It sure ain't the president of the United States of America. Absolutely not. Who's the only one that no one is criticizing and, and seems to be messing up everything? Pope Francis. And exactly. he's getting all the religious leaders to bow before exactly. him, go before him mm -hmm. for their special meeting. Exactly. So we see prophecy being fulfilled. The world is being led under them. Absolutely. Absolutely clear. All right. So let's move on to our next article, because now as we see prophecy and where it's going, now we got to look at the condition of God's people. Yes. And the condition of God's people in general is not a good condition. Okay. As Seventh-day Adventists, the institutions, our institutions, our leaders we're not in a good condition. If you notice, we have here um, Adventist Health, and we have where, thanks to uh, federal funding, Adventist Health has implanted a system-wide corporate policy that establishes transgender-based care with the gender-affirming room assignments. Wow. What does that mean? That means that because our institutions, our hospitals, our schools and things like that have received funding from the government, now we have to comply with their worldly policies that yes. go against our faith yes. and the word of God. Exactly. So extending the healing ministry of Christ doesn't seem to be the most important thing right. driving Advent Health any longer. Now it's simply extending state mandates to comply and to bring comfort to people all around us, no matter what they believe and no matter if it, con if it contradicts the Bible. Well, that's what happens when you sell out for money. Yes. Our institutions are not to be grabbing uh, tax money from the government or any of those no. things. We're to be a separate entity. Absolutely. And that's what we have deviated from. Yes. As God's people. And so now you see that now we're making accommodating transgenders mm -hmm. and all these things, making rooms for them in hospitals mm -hmm. when it totally goes against their biological sex. Yes. Yes. When you should be taking a room in the hospital according to your biological sex, not what you claim that you identify yourself. 
And even then, I mean, if you go to the hospital, you're there to receive treatment, you're there to receive care. Uh, if you're there for surgery, then that's another thing as well. But no matter what, the rooms are simply rooms for those who need to be taken care of. It's not something that, deter that is determined by whether you're male, female, or identify as male, female. Because in the moment of an emergency, nobody's asking you what, right. you, what you consider yourself to be. <laughs> no, nobody's asking you that. They want to know about the stab wound, the gunshot. They, they, they want to know about the car Your accident. Health, yes. so, so now this, how this takes precedence is beyond me. Because again, extending the healing ministry of Christ has everything to do with, yes, you're going to be helping them to care for them, to heal them, but also showing them from a biblical perspective why this is even necessary in the first right. place. And what's the point now if we're just going to bow to every state mandate? It's a terrible thing, but we have their statement here as recipient of federal financial assistance, mm -hmm. financial assistance. Mm -hmm. So we see there that they have accepted financial assistance mm -hmm. from the government, mm -hmm. and that's why they're taking these measures, these mm -hmm. steps, yeah. which are a denial of the faith. Yeah, it's almost as if the very first sentence is the justification right. of why we're doing this. Right, because when Jesus healed people, since we're talking about the hospitals, the system mm -hmm. of hospitals, when Jesus healed people, he did not separate healing from salvation. Absolutely not. Absolutely so, not. Us as Seventh-day Adventists, our hospitals, our institutions are supposed to be promoting, yes, physical healing, mm -hmm. assistance, but also salvation as well. Absolutely. And we are not doing that when we're actually affirming the abominations and the, and the contradictions that people want to uphold. Mm -hmm. And many Christians would say, well, why would you go out of your way to do this or to that or to do that? I would simply respond by saying, as a Christian, we're not going to go out of our way to make someone feel uncomfortable in an environment where we're meant to help you <clears throat> because of your health. But we also are not called to go out of our way to bow right. down and to sacrifice principle either. So which side are you going to stand on? Hmm. It's unfortunate, too. Let me add one more thing. Go ahead. James makes it clear. James chapter 4, verse 4. Friendship of the world is enmity with God. And that very first sentence that you started off, that I know you were going to uh, uh, finish that statement, is letting them know that as recipients of the government's friendship, is right. simply put what they're saying, as exactly. recipients of their assistance, their help, when we should only be leaning on Christ for help, right. but as recipients of the government's help, this has caused us to now take our stance and make a complete 180, and now we're doing gender-affirming rooms, care, surgeries, all, all of the above. Now when, we're, now when we're, as an institution and as a church, when we're falling victim to uh, the agenda of the LGBT movement, it is showing you that now we have abandoned our mission. Yes, seven day events. Absolutely. That's what that's showing you, these articles. We're showing you where God's people are going as a as a big institution. Mm -hmm. And it's not going good. It's not going anywhere good. Nope. It's going actually to the major omega of apostasy. Yes. Yes. And that's why God will only have a small faithful few that will receive the seal of God in the end, exactly. that will proclaim the truth, that will stand against all the abominations and the apostasy Absolutely. and falsehood of the world. Exactly. If a billion signatures is a first article, right. the second article is saying our Adventist institutions are failing, then it's no wonder there's a remnant only in end <laughs> time. It's very sad. It's yes. very sad. Absolutely. We can uh, move on to our last and final article which is, uh, it just gets worse with our institutions, our schools now. Yes. It gets a pile on top. It gets, it gets worse. Um, we have La Sierra University Church, right? Will hold the I Am Affirmed LGBT graduation ceremony on the Lord's Sabbath. Mm. Look at that, how disgraceful that is. I that mean, is are people really thinking 
Are we thinking as Seventh-day Adventists? I would say that where are the leaders? Many of the leaders are thinking very clearly, and it seems that they've made that they've taken a stance against God, is what it seems. As far as the laymen, the regular people of the church, some are not thinking and some are just not seeing it apparently. It is it is a horrible and scary thing yes. where we're going as God's people. Yes. Yes. Listen, this took place on June 3rd, 2023 of this year. Mm -hmm. La Sierra University was celebrating a special graduation to honor lesbian, gays, bisexuals, transgender, queer, and even students to acknowledge their achievements and contributions to the university. Mm -hmm. And all of this was done on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That is what's hard breaking yes, yes how would you celebrate and affirm what is a total abomination clearly in the word mm -hmm. a grave sin clearly in the word and then what makes it even worse what makes it even worse is that the regular ceremonies of the students didn't even take place on Saturday, mm -hmm. it, they they took place the regular graduation on Sunday. Interesting. But the abominable mm -hmm. graduation and affirmation took place on the Lord's Day. What an attack against God! Mm -hmm. And you call yourself an Adventist university? Oh, that is that is despicable. That and is this despicable. is the U La Sierra University Church. Yeah, this is blowing my mind. It is God who established the church, and it is God who established marriage. It is God who established humanity. It is God who established male and female. This is a complete mockery of God. We have the email that was sent wow. with the advert with the advertisement mm -hmm. from the Adventist Church and everything and the class, the, the celebration and all that, where you can see it on the screen. And let me tell you, it is it is devastating. Yes. Devastating yes. Yes. where we are going as God's people. Brothers and sisters, we have to really say to ourselves, what's going on with our leaders? What's going on with our institutions? Absolutely. Is this the group we're supporting? Is this where your tithe money and your offerings are going? Are these the churches that you wholeheartedly believe without a shadow of a doubt are doing the work of God in these last times? And if it isn't, it's time to make a change. But if this is something you would you agree with, then I would strongly urge you to reconsider, to really get back into the word of God, really take a step back, repent from that confusion and make that change right back to where traditional Christianity and even more specifically, traditional Adventism was raised up to be. Yes. I mean, let me tell you. Committing atrocities like this as God's people, seven day Adventists, how can we finish the work? We are in no condition to finish the work yes. in this type of apostasy and behavior. We're hindering it more now than ever. Yes. And that's why there's many independent ministries. Absolutely. Because, because we see what the major conference and the major institutions are doing, and no one is doing anything about these leaders. Yes. Moving forward in these in these apostasies and abominations. Yes. So what are we to do? Leaders. Are we to support that? Absolutely. No. Not. I believe no. Christ says you separate from the sin and the apostasy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you stand for truth and what is right. Absolutely. It's a, it's unfortunate to see leaders continuing to receive their salary, lay people continuing to pay their tithes and offerings. And not a single person in these big churches, the general conference. Right. Well, friends, with all the information that we have shared with you today, it is your duty, your responsibility to do what is right, to stand for what is right, to support what is right. And may the Lord help you in the decision you make. Friends, you've been listening to God's last message of mercy. May the Lord bless you. Advent Messenger Church would like to thank you for joining us. Prayerfully consider supporting us in carrying forward the special work that God has for these solemn times. You can securely donate online at our web address, adventmessengerchurch.com 
or you can mail in your donation to P.O. Box 690154, Orlando, Florida, 32869.